Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. A while ago, I purchased this 60 50 50 LED lamp, which contains 60 LEDs of the 50 50 tab, which is 5 times 5 millimeter. Each LED has three single chips running at up to 20 milliamps, meaning that one LED is 3 point something volts on 60 milliamps. This bulb is quite okay also it can be lethal because terminals which are basically directly connected to the mains uh, through a capacitor dropper are open and you could just touch every single terminal on here meaning that you can basically touch your lethal mains connection so this one stopped working after like half a year though it didn't really stop working it was just that part of the LEDs on here started flickering a little bit and that's because one of those tiny chips in there broke. And this is why, uh, why the LEDs flicker. Because they get like 20, 40 milliamps, 20, 40 milliamps. Because one of the little LEDs in here, because one of the little chips in those LEDs in here broke. And there are 180 little chips and that makes the chance one of those LEDs breaking even bigger. Due to fact. They're all wired in series. You can basically say that if one of the little chips breaks or stops working for a while and then turns on and turns off and turns on and turns off, the whole thing is sort of to flicker a little bit and it makes it darker and a little bit brighter. It's kind of annoying. So I thought it's just one LED and you're broken or even just one chip that we could put those LEDs in almost parallel and let the bulb run again. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool to let it run out of, of, of everything that you could imagine, like something like 6 to, I don't know, 30 volts, and hook up a solar panel or something to it? And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this 6 US dollar lamp apart, and this was like 6 dollars something shipped to Germany, and you will see that for sure there's a capacitive dropper in which is kind of lethal if you consider that the power gets passed through through those terminals on the LEDs but they have 105 degrees Celsius capacitors which is quite nice and the whole thing works it has one year warranty that's quite okay but I'm not going to send it in for reparation because just one of those tiny LEDs or chips broke and that's just weird. They even have an aluminium PCB to dissipate, dissipate the heat a little bit better and as you can see all of, the, all of those LEDs are wired in series and I thought hey six LEDs in series per panel and on top there are 12 LEDs in series why don't we put two of those panels in series each so we have 12 LEDs in series 12 on top in series and we put up the voltage to something like 37, 38 volts, so those LEDs can run without having a pre-resistor or current limitation, because they're not running on their maximum of 60 milliamps per chip. They're just running on about, I don't know, 40 milliamps because the voltage is too low. So I also bought this XL6009 boost converter, which is basically a LM2597 on steroids little chip on here is an XL6009 which contains a MOSFET which can basically output up to 4 amps and I thought why don't we put it in here boost the voltage like 6 to I don't know 35 volts up to 37 or 38 volts the maximum that this thing can and put those LEDs in there 2 panels in series each and we just have kind of a solar light for pretty cheap money because this XL converter only cost like a dollar and fifty cents posted. So basically we have to start off by cutting off some of the wires that we don't have to have in this serious configuration. We want to clip off the wires and enable us 
to basically rewire all of those LED panels in kind of a serious parallel configuration. And this capacitive dropper is quite useful because you have some high voltage capacitors and another high voltage fault capacitor and a bridge rectifier or half wave rectifier as it seems to me. So those two aren't serious. Those two aren't serious. Those two aren't serious. And those two aren't serious. And the top one, just as it is, because they're 12 in series already. It even comes out of there. The whole lamp is just clipped together and it makes it quite easy to work with it. Nothing potter or so. We can just start off by making those connections. And as you can see, we got this cable over here not connected because I clipped it off. And that's why we need some spare cable. And I have some leftover speaker cable. Just going to cut up a little piece. So, there was kind of an epic fail happening to me. I was just soldering the whole thing, and suddenly, a soldering iron stopped working. And I have a little fix video uploaded as well. And now it's working again. It was just like a two minute fix, and now it works again, but very weird. Short circuited, and what all luck, this soldering iron is running 12 volts. <laughs> so I soldered up all of those panels now. Just have to connect all of the negatives together and all of the positives. And also this negative and this positive of the top panel. The only thing is we have to get this boost converter down in there. Not a problem because of the size of it, but the cables in there are just way too short. I have to find a way of putting them together now. And you for sure should put your DC to DC boost converter to the output voltage needed. In this case it is an XL6009. Maximum output voltage is about 38 volts, and that's exactly what we need. 12 LEDs in series take about 36 to 39 volts. So I can just put it all up till it clicks, and we have maximum output voltage. If you have a different DC to DC converter, just hook it up, put a voltmeter on the output, and look for the voltage you need. It seemed quite tricky to get the boost converter in there with those small cables. So I just pulled the bottom off and I'm resoldering cables to it. You for sure look for the polarity because this DC to DC converter is going to blow up if you have wrong polarity. You can also put a diode on the input to make sure everything is working correctly. And just for safety purpose I'm going to solder in this diode. This white stripe should be on the negative side of the base. When you put the DC converter down in there, you can join all the positive and all the negative together, including the output of the DC to DC converter. Don't forget to put or the hook up. Don't forget to hook up negative and positive off the top panel as well. Try to twist off the wires together and then apply solder. And then solder them together. Try to insulate positive and negative so they don't touch each other. So there you are. Your modded light bulb is finished. It even has reverse polarity protection, which is very useful for using with a DC to DC converter. To see how well it performs, I put it into an E27 base. Now I'm going to apply power to the input. You saw the arcing, and this is normal because the capacitor on the input of the DC to DC converter 
just charged up and the whole light bulb is working it is very very bright and you can see that I can even vary the input voltage and the brightness of the bulb stays exactly the same and I shouldn't go too low because the amperage on input will rise and that will result in uh, too much amperage on the diode as well as on the input of the DC to DC converter. You will, you might see that this one panel is kind of not lighting up and this is because this was probably the panel that was broken. I can just try to resolder it and make everything work but if you buy a new light bulb that should not happen. Anyway it is very very bright and you can see that if we go up to like 20 volts it's drawing about 500 milliamps, which is 10 watts, and that's exactly what this bulb is rated for. It is ultra bright, just as bright as you would have the original light bulb. But keep in mind, don't hook it up to the mains because it's just going to blow up and probably set itself on fire. But perfect for solar applications. I basically wanted to know why this thing doesn't work. I tested all of those LEDs with my voltmeter put to 3.6 volts, and this was the only the LED not lighting up. So what you have to do is you have to bridge it. you have to make connection from here to there the, the other LEDs will light up brighter because there's more voltage on them but they will work as well and it's just one LED not working that's quite a good result so I peeled off the broken LED and now I'm going to solder this one side to the other because the LED is not working we're just going to bridge it So, we interconnected it and now we're going to see whether the thing is running on all 59 LEDs that are left. Oh, wrong polarity. Well, luck, we fed the diode in. And, just have a look. The thing is running with all LEDs, but the one that was broken. So, we basically even fixed it. And we modded it. That's perfect. It's now running at about 530 milliamps and 20.4 volts and you can't really tell that those LEDs are brighter I think this LED is broken as well or partly because it's a little bit dimmer than the others but still the thing is just super bright and perfect for use with solar panels or video shooting cool white perfect for making videos so I hope we'll see each other again in a different video and yeah that's for now